Hello and welcome to The Shed and the next video from Sporty Cyclist. Now I have a habit of using things until they're well past the point at which they're not working properly. Partly this is my profound Yorkshireness, you know, deep pockets, short arms, partly inertia. Early in 2018, the performance of my rear wheel finally got so annoying that I did something about it. I needed to buy a new one. After much research, okay some research, okay a quick Google search, I bought a pair of the Campagnola Zonda C17 wheels. Then I fitted them, then I rode them, and this is my long-term review. Cue the intro music. My friendly local bike mechanic mentioned that I needed a new rear wheel back in 2016 when I took the bike in to replace the front derailleur and to get the overall drivetrain serviced. At the time he said it simply wasn't economic to replace the bearings and re-grease the hub. He recommended that I get a new set of wheels. Now this was great advice that I promptly ignored. Now I know the moment when the balance finally tipped in favour of allowing the moths to escape from uh, my pockets it was captured in this pleasingly titled ride on Strava. Since no self-respecting sportive cyclist buys just the one wheel or misses an opportunity to upgrade something on the bike, a gleaming new wheel set was required. Like most people seeking answers, I dug out my well-thumbed copy of Mont Cycling Miscellany. But since this didn't appear to exist, I just banged best bike wheels for under 500 quid into Google. The new wheels would need to be sufficiently resilient to stand up to the wintry Derbyshire road surfaces. Now, I don't have the time or the money to be swapping out a set of training wheels for more expensive, lighter race wheels when the mood takes me. These new wheels, while certainly an upgrade, will be going on my main everyday bike and staying on my main everyday bike for every day. They would also need to look good. I'm not spending hundreds of pounds without at least some aesthetic improvement on my steed. They wouldn't need to be aero, for I'm not aero. But from a visual perspective, I am rather partial to a slightly deeper rim. <coughs> they also needed to be lighter than my previous wheels. I did at least want some performance benefit from the upgrade. So how much should you pay on a new set of road bike wheels? So I initially set my budget at £500, which is about $650 for the Amerifolk in the room. And here's my tortured mathematical logic. So I'm riding a bike that at the time cost about £1,800. I guess in today's money, uh, the equivalent bike would be around £2,000. The wheels that came with the bike, which were made by Bontrager, 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 Bontrager. The original wheels that came with the bike, made by Bontrager, which is part of Trek, and is also probably where Trek saved some of the money. So let's say they were worth about £100. I was looking to spend an amount that made sense in the overall context of the quality of the bike. So that's a nice carbon frame, it's a Trek domain, and a mix of Shimano 105 um, with the odd bit of Ultegra componentry mixed in. And then finally, I've already bought a set of wheels that cost between £100 and £150. I wanted to step up to the next price point to see what that would mean in terms of performance. And with this tortured logic bouncing around my brain, I set out on my quest. Now ever since I heard that Mavic makes wheels that are more round than its competitors, I've wanted a pair. Now whilst the point about Mavic wheels being more round was actually made up in 2012 by Dale Brailsford, in fact my reason for wanting Mavics is no more logical. I just think they look cool. They're the neutral service wheel on the Tour de France handed out from Mavic's bright yellow support cars and motorcycles. I even like the brand names that Mavic uses, whether that's Cosmic, Comet, Axiom, and the relatively, or oh, indeed, very unpronounceable Chrysalisium. But the problem was, when it came to actually buying the wheels, I couldn't quite get to grip with the range of options available. All of the wheels that were in my price range seemed to be unavailable and they seemed to be very focused on their tubeless technology. And I wasn't quite ready to make the jump from inner tubes to tubeless quite yet. So it was back to the drawing board, or Google. Now for obvious reasons, I'm not going to subject you to my entire Google search history. So here are the highlights. So firstly Shimano. As part of my quest to gradually upgrade my components on the bike from Shimano 105 up to Ultegra, I did have a look at the Ultegra equivalent wheels. I actually quickly discounted them because they just didn't do it for me in the looks department. I'm pretty 
pretty sure that Fulcrum make fine wheels, indeed the internet tells me that they do, but if I'm going to drop some cash on some Campagnola wheels, I'd actually quite like them to say Campagnola on them. I should note at this point that my track has rim brakes, so I didn't need wheels that were designed for disc brakes. As I've already alluded to, Luddite Montgomery is not ready to make the leap to tubeless technology quite yet, so the wheels did need to be suitable for clincher tyres and for inner tubes. The Yorkshireman's approach to budgeting is to set out intending to spend £500 on road bike wheels and in the end only dropping closer to 300 Plus a change, as they say in Yorkshire. Having undertaken the research and looked deep within my cycling soul, I determined that the Campagnola Sonda C17s were the right wheel set for me. So I bought them, they arrived, I fitted them, and I've been using them for the last 12 months. So how did I get on? As long-time readers of my blog will know, and short-time readers will guess, I don't really have a vast frame of reference when comparing components on the bike. I don't have a load of wheels in my wheelhouse, so the following isn't based on a comprehensive peer analysis. However, other reviews online describe the Zondas as fast rolling. Now I can't dispute this, they felt good as soon as I put them on the bike. I immediately felt faster, and as we know it's all about the feels. I'm on a different bike right now, my old doors, with lower spec Campagnola wheels and I can certainly tell the difference. Now quite how much of that is to do with the wheels versus the heavier frame is somewhat unclear. Reviews also point to the durability of the Zondas and I can certainly confirm this. I've had the wheels on the bike for the best part of a year and through this time I've mainly ridden on country roads that see an awful lot of farm traffic and they have the grit, the potholes, the mud to prove it. The Zondas have endured all of this abuse without complaint. I filmed some footage of the bike chattering away as it rattles over some of this rough stuff. This is a pretty common occurrence on my rides. As far as I can see, the Zondas remain true and without wear despite all of this. Since durability and longevity, did I mention I'm from Yorkshire, were the key criteria when selecting the Zondas, I'm pleased that the claims have been borne out in real world conditions. Online reviews also point to the firm ride provided by the Zondas. Now, I imagine that you can't exactly get fast rolling and durable without also ticking the firm ride box, but then I'm neither a wheel builder nor an engineer, so who am I to say? Still, the Mega G3 spoke pattern on the rear wheel purports to provide plenty of stiffness, making sure that all of that power that you throw down gets translated into forward motion, which has to be a good thing. The Zonda C17s are not tubeless ready, but as someone that doesn't really understand the risks and merits of riding without inner tubes, this isn't something that bothers me. Although not for tubeless reasons, the Zondas don't require rim tape. The Momag technology, no, me neither, means that the spokes attach to the rims in such a way that it doesn't leave the tyre bed with spoke holes. Apparently the Zondas are optimised for wider tyres, whether 25mm or 28mm. This is probably something to do with airflow, drag coefficients and marketing departments. Anyway, I bought a nice new set of 25mm tyres, which are the Continental Grand Prix 4000S 2s, in case you're interested. So, can you fit a Shimano cassette to a Campagnola wheel? I should probably have dealt with this one up front. And the short answer is yes. Despite being Campagnola, clearly, the Zondas are available with a Shimano free hub body, works with 9, 10 and 11 speed gears and also Campagnola. And now we're into the meat of it. What really matters when you buy a new set of road bike wheels? Well, for me, it's two things. Clickiness and looks. The right amount of clickiness, the sound it makes as it free wheels along, will come down to personal preference. For the wheel builder, it's a fine balance. You want it to be loud enough to sound as if there's a pro cyclist in the group. But you don't want it too loud that it sounds offensive or that there's something wrong with the wheels. For me, the Zondas strike the right balance. Secondly, looks. The wheels already have a touch of the cool factor through being made by Campagnola. I like the spoke pattern on the rear wheels, remember, the Mega G3s. I like the black, slightly deeper section that's just inside the rims of both wheels. I don't have an aversion to having Campagnola emblazoned all across them. For choice, you might prefer a slightly deeper section in order to tell people that you're so aero. Right now, for me, I'll save that sartorial selection until I get a proper set of race wheels. In short, the Zondas are a fine, handsome, robust and clicky set of wheels that I've got on very well with over the last 12 months, and I'd certainly recommend them. So, over to you. Do you like riding a bike with wheels? 
let me know in the comments. If you like this video, click the like button. If you didn't like this video, click the like button. If you've got a bike, click the like button. If you want to see more videos from me, hit subscribe. I've been Monty, this is Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal Channel. I'll see you in the next video.